What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. Final week here of the regular season here in Sentinels franchise. I mentioned last week that I may sim out this week and get straight to the playoffs. However, we still have something to play for. Season is not done yet. We are 12 and 4, so first place, number one seed in the NFC as of right now. However, the Seahawks and the Falcons only one game behind us. Now, the Seahawks, we did beat them earlier in the season, crushed them if memory serves. So don't think it wouldn't matter if we lost and they won uh, here in Week 18. However, the Falcons, I have no idea what the tiebreaker would be if we were to lose this week and they were to win. I don't know what that would mean. So got to make sure that we take care of business. If we win today, number one seed is 100% ours. So season not over yet. So we are going to get to see one more, hopefully action-packed week here in Sentinels franchise before the playoffs. Oh, and by the way, did I mention JJ Ford is back? That is right. After, I believe, four long weeks of being sidelined, we are going to get to see the, at one point, potential MVP candidate of the league. Probably doesn't have it now because he's been out for several weeks, but J.J. Ford is back. So no more Sam Howell, no more Josh Dobbs. I mean, look at this guy right here. That is a man's man right there. That is the face of an absolute dog. The two-year man out of Fresno State, superstar X-Factor. Going to be so nice to see him back on the field with that Dots X-Factor slinging to his buddies, Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel and George Williams and Bart Burns. And hopefully with JJ back, he can propel us to 100% locking up that number one seed in the NFC. And seeing as how this is the final uh, negotiation period that we can do before the offseason. And if you if you try to negotiate with someone in the offseason and you don't get them, they're hitting free agency. So should probably ought to square up some contracts. Damian Lewis, for sure, going to try to extend him. He's a great guard for us. Sam Howe, I mean, he wants four years, $21.5 million to basically throw picks. I probably would just sign somebody in free agency to back up J.J. Ford. A lot of these players probably don't really need. I mean, not a lot of, definitely not Josh Dobbs. I saw enough in the quarter and a half or whatever that he played. Dante Fowler's too old. We can do better. Andrew Wiley's probably too old. We can do better. Joey Sly, need him. And of course, we will extend Emmanuel Forbes uh, his or pick up his fifth year option, I should say, in the offseason. So let's just go ahead and lock up Damian Lewis here. He wants to be here. He's a good, he's a good uh, left guard for us. He wants two years, uh, $27 million. And maybe we can even drop that down a little bit, you know, to uh, three year. $39 million, that'll decrease the cap hit a little bit. Damian Lewis is coming back, so we got our left guard position locked up for the foreseeable future. Sorry, Sam, I, I just, uh, I'm not sold on you, brother. I'm not sold on you at all. Let's go ahead and try to get Joey Sly. Now, he does not want to be here, and I'm definitely not going to, I want him. I do want him. Joey Sly has played great for us, but... He doesn't want to be here, really. Uh, I'm not going to overpay for him. I'm, I mean, I'll put it up to three years, $12 million if he doesn't accept that. Okay, he did. All right, good deal. So Joey Sly accepts. And then going into the next uh, season here, we're going to have some cap room to work with. So it's going to be interesting to see what this team looks like next year. And here we go, guys. An NFC East inner division battle to determine if we will lock up the number one seed. It does not get any better than that. We are back at home and we got our MVP quarterback back on the field. So if you guys are fired up for some more St. Louis Sentinels content and you cannot wait until the playoffs, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Remember at 1000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway and you should subscribe if you love Madden content because I drop it multiple times a week. So Without further ado, guys, let's get on down to Sentinels Field. Hopefully lock up this number one seed and get ready for the game. Ooh, a snow game at Sentinels Field, really? This is, the, what a way to end the season, man. Trying to lock up the number one seed. Got our MVP back, and we're going to be playing in the snow, which I don't think I've seen a snow game in this series, at least not in Sentinels Field. And the snow is certainly pouring. Is that a thing? Can snow pour? 
I don't know, but there's snow on the field, and that could make for some slippery and slick conditions today. Not going to have to wait long to see the long-awaited return of J.J. Ford because the Sentinels are getting the ball here first. And, hey, I don't know what to expect here, guys. I know that I am certainly, certainly ready for the playoffs. It's a shame about J.J. Ford, too, because he probably would have won the MVP, and he probably would have, he definitely, 100%, would have led the league in passing yards. However, I believe that old slippery, snaky Patrick <laughs> Mahomes is uh, now leading the league in yards and probably going to win MVP as well. But we got more important things on the agenda here as we are trying to get to the playoffs. So let's start out here. Shotgun mesh concept. Got to watch this snow. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, my God. That was uh, Kayvon Thibodeau back there. That ball was bouncing around like a pinball. And wouldn't, wouldn't that have been something? Wouldn't that have been something? J.J. Ford's first game back, and he throws a pick on the opening play of the game. That would have been uh, absolutely heartbreaking. So second and 10 here, we're going to roll out of a single back, and Terry's right there, our favorite target. Terry breaking tackles. He might get to 1,700. So far, uh, you know, by the time this season's over, he was well over 15, and a big game here today could Get him over that 1,700 yard mark. It's like that. We are into Giants territory here. So we're going to come out shotgun here with a bunch to our right and see who wants to go ahead and get open. We're going to check it down underneath to Samuel. What an elite dynamic duo, Curtis Samuel and Terry McLaurin. I mean, they have really taken the league by storm here in this franchise and combined for, they're going to combine for close to. To, uh, oh my god, what is going on over there on the left side? Hold on, hold the phone here. We could have Jahan or Terry, whoever wants to get open first. Uh, we're gonna go to Terry, but probably not gonna get it. No, I got a little greedy there. I saw nobody on Jahan Dotson, and I saw Terry getting pressed. It's like, get the devil off of my shoulder, man. What are you doing to me, Madden? But now, third and two, we're gonna bring in Dwight Jackson, little. Single back wham up the middle. Remember, it's always tough to run against these Giants with Dexter Lawrence and Kayvon Thibodeau and company. And Dwight made a heck of an effort, but he is going to be stopped short. And let's see what the coach wants us to do. Coach is saying go for it. Coach is saying go for it. I was probably going to kick a field goal, not going to lie to you, but the coach is saying go for it. Can't argue with the coach, who is me, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, try to pick this up here, fourth and two. We're going to come out single back with a couple stick routes on the field here. Bart Burns, sure-handed as always. Nice curl route there. He had an option, chose to sit down on his route. Sentinels do pick up the first down. Yeah, it's definitely tough to run inside against these Giants, so let's see uh, if the outside run proves to be any better. Dudley with that speed. Can he juke a man? He does. Put somebody on skates there and uh, very fitting with the conditions on the field as well. Dudley ever elusive as always. Always able to make a man miss in the open field as we know. And that's got the Sentinels down to the four yard line here. Now, I do like the hole that I'm seeing from Dudley. RPO is an option. We're going to test it. George Williams should be able to power through. And he does indeed. Xavier McKinney could not wrap him up. George is going to dance right in his face. And that wasn't an easy drive, though. I mean, we do score. We do finish uh, in the end zone, which is always nice to see. But a little bit of adversity there. So the Giants, you know, their season more than likely over. But I don't know, actually. With the win today, that put them at 9-8. and eight. Guess they still got a chance. Season probably over, we'll say. But it looks like they got a little bit of fight left in the tank. Not going to go down easy in this one. Danny Dimes, our old buddy. He's played uh, some good games against us. You know, I mean, it's Danny Dimes. Sure, some Giants fans a little salty that the Giants didn't target one of those many quarterbacks in this previous draft. They did not. So it looks like Daniel Jones is going to be their guy, at least for another season. And the other guy that we have to worry about in this one is Saquon Barkley. Great defense from Emmanuel Forbes. Saquon, of course, in Philly now, but still here on the Giants roster in this franchise. And that's right, I always forget, the Giants got Brian Robinson too. And they got uh, Ricky Bayless, the auto-generated guy who's an X-factor. So their running back room is just absolutely loaded. 
Saquon always plays good. That one should be a hold, though. Should be coming back. We'll see what the ref says here in Sentinels Field. It is a hold, and it will be coming back. So good looking out, Cody Ford. I'd be very curious to see if we do see Brian Robinson in this one. That was, of course, our former running back, as most of you guys know. Saquon on the outside cuts it inside. Cam Curl and Chase Young there to get him for only a gain of four. And that is going to bring up a third and a very, very long here. Let's just play good, solid zone coverage. No need to get beat on anything crazy. Hopefully our guys can get the Giants off of the field. And that, don't know what just happened. It just got very, very dark. <laughs> okay. The fall start. So the Giants moving back even more. What are you doing, Dayball? What are you? Huh? you Got to get your team together, man. Mental errors costing the Giants on this one. So I will certainly take it. Now we're in here. Good dime cover or good uh, dime package again. Jones surveying. Going to check it down to Darren Waller out of the backfield. But well short. Not even close to the line to gain as Jamin Davis able to wrestle him down. What did I say? The Giants uh, were bringing some fight in this one. I don't know. Uh, they're bringing out Jake Bailey to punt the ball right now. That much I do know. De their defense looked uh, decent on their drive. But offense... Led by Daniel Jones. Did not look focused or ready for that one. There we go. You see it. We clinched the playoffs. And the Giants are still in the hunt, too, I saw. So, you know, not sure about all the tiebreakers and, you know, all that crazy stuff. Don't even really care because all I care about is us getting the number one seed. But it looks like the Giants could. They're not mathematically eliminated is what I'm saying here. Let's go. Dwight Jackson on the outside. Jackson's got room to run. The blocking is good. Breaking tackles from Xavier McKinney. So, again, we're back into Giants territory. Going to come out single back here with Ford. And let's just go ahead and drop it down to McLaurin. Two big catches now. Terry playing good as always. Gain of eight on the play. Thinking probably most of the run's going to be outside. Because, I, I mean, look, the Giants are in our division. I've played them now about six or eight times. And I just know at least, at least this current roster that they have right here always difficult to run inside against them they got you know like i said leonard williams dexter lawrence Kayvon thibodeau aziz ojalari is always pretty good in coverage and i just know and as i say that now i'm going inside run i realize it is a draw though so a little bit different than just uh you know inside give and tell you what dudley running like he means business breaking ankles breaking tackles picking up first downs I don't see any reason to really go away from him as we get into uh, the later stages here of the first quarter. We are going to be running it right at Dexter Lawrence, though, which I do not like. He sheds blocks like a madman right on cue there. We lose about one and a half, as a matter of fact. And third and two coming up. Third down and two. Let's go screen pass to Saxon. I kind of like the way that this one could work here with some good blockers. We could have something. And we most certainly do as Dudley is able to pick up great, great yardage following the blockers of Braden Daniels and others. And now we got it into the 10-yard line here. So these uh, Sentinels really playing like they want that number one seed, which we do, of course. And I think this is going to be outside run and running away from our blockers there on the right side because I see some daylight, and I could definitely see Dudley getting this with some good blocks. We don't have them, though unfortunately, and we are wrestled down there by Cody Barton, another former Sentinel. Fell in Dwight Jackson here, and let's see if he can get something going on the outside. Uh, one man to beat, that's a hold. Does not even matter. That one is coming on back. Let's see who the culprit is. I'm guessing Damian Lewis. He just got a contract extension, so, oh, nope. It's going to be Will Devlin, as a matter of fact. Don't need to get all this back here. Want to just get a decent amount back. So we're going to come out play action out of the single back and got some crossers working there. And let's go ahead. I uh, was going to check it down to our tight end there, but it was Cody Barton. He certainly knows this team very well. He almost got to J.J. Ford. Like I said, though, we're not getting met without adversity here. Giants defense is playing pretty good. Um, George underneath could be a second touchdown of the day. No. Oh, man, got tackled mere inches from the end zone. But George Williams got open on his route, and we led him underneath beautifully. Look, I'm telling you, after playing four weeks of Sam Howell and Joshua Dobbs, it was rough, 
we did win. We got the wins. But I think it was really in spite of them. Not so much. Be it definitely wasn't because of them. But it just feels so much more fluid with J.J. Ford here. And uh, Leonard Floyd gets injured. That's good. Maybe we can actually run the ball inside now. I watch Xavier McKinney out there. And, of course, Dexter Lawrence got his X Factor on, too. But why stick to Terry? Could be the move. And he hangs on. Not an easy catch. Not an easy pass. Xavier McKinney, who is a superstar in this game, in this franchise, as a matter of fact, going to be interesting to see him on the Packers next season. Good cover man. And uh, Ford was able to fit it right in a spot where only McLaurin could catch it. Catch it, he did. Giants better figure it out here and figure it out fast because we got full momentum and we are up 14 to nothing. Cam Curl trying to guard Barkley. James Smith Williams, our sack leader on the season, adds to that total. And talk about unexpected difference makers on the team. Who would have thought with all the great defenders we got, John Allen and Chase Young and others like Justin Hayward there, if you would have told me that James Smith Williams was going to be our sack leader, I would have told you to seek out an AA meeting because there's no way. But he is. And look at the yardage disparity. Giants can't get anything going. It is all St. Louis Sentinels. I wanted a competitive game, but I'll tell you what, man. Right now, I just want to get that number one seed. So if this ends up being a blowout or a route, I will certainly take it. And it looks like that might be the case. John Allen couldn't get Daniel Jones, but luckily his brother Chase Young was there to get him. Giants can't get anything going. And they're going to punt the ball back to the Sentinels again. Daniel Jones, just no protection, nowhere to go. And how's that snow feel on Sentinels Field? I bet it's pretty cold, huh? Got a feeling he's going to be uh, in that snow a lot today. I'm going to go ahead and double team Dexter Lawrence, as a matter of fact. It probably won't matter because he sheds blocks in this game with the best of them, but maybe it will. Dudley, <laughs> fine. Oh, he's still going too. Look, this Sentinels team is playoff ready. They are trying to show the league what they're really about. We are not pumping the brakes. We are not going easy on these Giants here. We want the NFL to know if you got to come to Sentinels Field and play us in the playoffs, you better watch film. You better be ready. You better be on your A game because we got something to prove. And I love it. Bobby Okereke, the linebacker, goes down. We are already into the red zone of the Giants here. I'm going to keep going on the ground for as long as they allow me to. You know, J.J. Ford's been gone for a little while, and I'm sure some people would love to see him. But look at that. Dudley, nine, what did it say? Nine rushes for 76 yards? I mean, if I don't have to throw passes with J.J. Ford, I'm not going to throw passes with J.J. Ford because, uh, you know, I just want to play smart football. And right now, smart football is running the ball with Saxon, and he's going to score again. 21-0. Giants don't even have, if you count those sacks, the lost yards on the sacks, they have no yards in this game. Negative yardage, as a matter of fact. Will the Giants be able to do anything? Maybe you need to bring in Brian Robinson, right? Maybe Brian Robinson could be the spark that they need to get something going. Tony Knight's chasing down Jones. Tony Knight used to be a Giant. We orchestrated that trade to send Brian Robinson and Cody Barton to the Giants. We got a third-round pick and middle linebacker Tony Knight. So there's a lot of storylines here. Tony Knight, of course, knows this team very well. Cody Barton and Brian Robinson know our team very well, but we're not seeing Brian, at least not as of yet. And that might be, that is, I believe, the Giants' first, first down of the game. Second and two now. Jones going to go back into this single back, probably give it to Barkley. Nope, it's a play fake. He is going to give it to Barkley, though, out of the flat. Jamin Davis couldn't get him down with the hit stick. Justin Hayward does recover and get him. Giants got the ball to midfield, and this is literally the best that they have looked all game long. So we need to, uh, again, not pumping the brakes here, not going easy on the Giants. We want to make them earn it, and we want to show the league what we're about. Darren Waller showing us what he's about, though. I believe that's his third catch of the game. Now here on third and five, I do want to bring a spy out onto the field because Jones does have some legs. We've seen that on display a couple times. The last thing we want to do is play good coverage and have him burn us. There's Paris Campbell, the former Ohio State Buckeye, moving the chains. Giants got a pretty good drive going here. And I see Saquon looking a little winded back there. 
So mayhaps we could see Brian Robinson. I really hope so. I want to see Brian. I really like Brian. Didn't want to have to trade him, but Dudley is the guy. Let's be honest. And Giants now down to the 25-yard line. We're going to man up again. That's actually the running back, Eric Gray. So not sure why he's the one they chose to spell in. They got Brian Robinson and two-year man Ricky Bayless, the former second-round pick back in 2024. X-Factor, might I add, auto-generated, of course. Not if you're, if you're, like, thinking back, like, who is Ricky Bayless? No, he's not a real guy. Uh, but he is in this franchise, and I don't know why they went to Gray. Nice cutback there by Barkley. He's still going. A nice long methodical drive by the Giants. All right, Jones coming out single back now. Let's get into the backfield. Jamin Davis, I am talking to you, brother. And Jamin, oh, he did force Jones to make a tough throw, but Waller, he's been their savior today. Without Darren Waller, I don't know who would be making plays because even him, he's at five for 32. So it's not like, you know, the stats aren't going to blow you away or anything like that. I do not like this coverage that I'm in here, and I do like the defense there, though, by Tony Hoover, still looking for his first career interception. Not going to get it on that one, but still good defense. All right, we are going to man up with the boys here. Tony Knight going to use her up on him. Saquon looking winded, and of course, Darren Waller, Joshua Azudu, the offensive lineman, going to go down. But how clutch was Waller on that drive, man? Prevents this thing from... Prevents the stands from trying to beat traffic early, I would say. And uh, making it just a little bit more interesting, putting a little bit of pressure on us. All right, new drive here, first and 10. We're going to come out here with uh, a little curls concept. Curtis Samuel, nice curl route there. He is going to be met there and stopped by Deontay Banks, the three-year man out of Maryland. And that is going to take us down to the two-minute warning. And look at that. That's so funny. It's like you see their HB draw out of gun. Brian Robinson's picture, it's like the game knows that Brian Robinson used to be on this team and they know he's in this game. So it's like he's still, for whatever reason, in that set there. Nice uh, shed by Leonard Williams. So I guess he's not too hurt from earlier. And I believe he just punched him in. I like screen pass that the coach is suggesting here. Now, yes, I want to score, obviously. But the even more important than that, the main goal is we just don't want the Giants to score heavy pressure. It's picked up, though, and Dudley off to the races. Juke move. Aziz Ojolari going to stop us. How about J.J. Ford in his first game back? 10 for 13 and two touchdowns. And I'm not in a tremendously uh, – what am I trying to say? I'm not in a tremendous hurry to snap this ball here because we got all three timeouts. We're already into Giants territory, and again – just don't want them to really have any sort of chance to pick up any sort of scores before halftime. Look at Terry. He might score. He will. Oh, my God. Look, let me let me give you guys a little life lesson here, okay? This is, this is not original, but it applies. You truly don't know what you have till it's gone. That same exact play that I just hit Terry on. Now, that was all Terry, right? But... I threw passes out of that set with both Sam Howe and Joshua Dobbs. And I we we did not see results like that. We saw balls go out of bounds. We saw balls get picked. So if you ever hear somebody say, you don't know what you got till it's gone, think back to JJ Ford, and that will all make so much sense. I just got to make sure that the Giants don't score. Would love to uh, force a quick three and out or a pick or a sack. John Allen, they're going to call a timeout. Not sure I really agree with that. They may just want to get into the locker room because nothing really good can happen. Second and 17 with 44 seconds left, but they are going to try to go for it. And Jones almost got sacked again. What a half of football here for the Sentinels. 28-7. Giants showed a little bit of signs of life. But you just already, with even with still with two quarters to go, if you're Brian Dayball, you just might get the feeling that it's too little too late. I went blitz counter to start. That seemed to work pretty well. I'm going to do that again. And I also went defend the outside run, which I'm going to do again. You know, it seemed to be working. And uh, Giants, really, this is a make or break drive for them because if they score, even if they score, they're going to have a lot of obstacles to overcome. But if they don't score and pump the ball back to us, 
Could be warm milk and bedtime story time. Could be time for night night. Let's see what type of halftime speech Brian Dayball had for his boys in the locker room. He probably just yelled at them and raised his blood pressure, maybe threw some Gatorade cups or something like that. Uh, Darren Waller or Isaiah Hodgins, I assumed it was Darren Waller because why wouldn't it be? He's been about their only really bright spot on offense or in this game, let's be honest. And we're going to press up with the guys. Press Blitz going to use her up on Quan Martin just in case Saquon leaks back. He's not, so Martin's an extra defender. Jones getting pressured and forced to throw it away. Obvious passing situation here for the Giants. So we can safely guess pass here and hopefully just play some good coverage. Jones trying to take off. And good thing I was usered up there on Jamin Davis because Jones did have a little bit of daylight. But the Giants are going to have to bring back Jake Bailey again and punt it. So that is no bueno for them. They really needed that. And we got a chance to really open this thing up here with a score if it wasn't opened up already. See what J.J. Ford and Dudley Saxon have for him here. We'll start things out with Dudley here. Nothing too crazy. Don't need to really uh, go away from what's working. I mean, let's be honest. Dudley is killing it. 12 rushes for 88 yards. J.J. Ford pumped up, and he should be. Let's see if we can actually run it up the middle, though. That is, has been the problem. Dudley gets exactly what he needed, just enough. That will make it first down here. Dudley with a nine, what, a 90? No, not nine. <laughs> Averaging about nine yards per carry. Had a little bit of a brain lapse there, sorry. 90 yards on the ground. You love to see it. George Williams, who's had a really big game here, actually falls forward and gets the first down. J.J. Ford, near perfect game. Not really crazy on the yards, but he hasn't had to be. I mean... You know, we asked J.J. to do a lot. We asked him to Greg Jennings it and put the team on his back many, many times. And sometimes, you know, when other players step up like Dudley, nice little uh, reprieve for J.J. Ford. Dudley is doing that and doing it at a high level. Giants, if they want any shot in this ballgame, they are really going to need to find a way to stop us. We're going to put Curtis Samuel on a drag route and I think actually Terry on a curl. I got something working in uh, the, the cogs in the old brain are turning here and look at that dot, man. You would not get that with Sam Howe or, or uh, Josh Dobbs, the pastronaut. And J.J. Ford is literally just a cheat code on this game. I mean, look at that. Threads the needle beautifully, beautifully. And if you guys watch the games with Howe and Dobbs, same playbook, same calls, definitely not the same results. And it is so nice to have J.J. Ford healthy in time for the playoffs because if we didn't have, if we had to go with Sam Howe or Dobbs or someone for the playoffs, I'd be thinking maybe first round exit. Come out single back here. Going to be a little play action rollout. Probably looking for McLaurin. Can we find him? We do. And Terry and J.J. Ford having a freaking party here in Sentinels Field. Best buds back on the field. Terry's probably thinking like, thank God, man, if I had to catch passes from Howell for too much longer, I may seek out a trade. And J.J. Ford certainly brings out the best of an already good receiver. I missed an extra point, and that might be the first thing that went right for the Giants so far in this entire game. This would be huge to carry this type of momentum into the playoffs. Of course, we're going to get a first round bye, and Justin Hayward going to get a pick. This thing is all but over. This Sentinels team is ready for the playoffs, and I hope that you guys are ready for the playoffs as well. If you are, please like the video and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you are subscribed already, thank you so much. You have been witnessing uh, something great here in this franchise, I think. Started off, of course, with the Washington Commanders, relocated them in the first season, did not make the playoffs. We went... Uh, maybe eight and nine, I want to say. Year number two, J.J. Ford is the new sheriff in town. Dudley Saxon gets the starting role. And we do make the playoffs and go all the way to the NFC Conference Championship and lose to our foes, the Dallas Cowboys. Year number three, have not written the script yet, but it looks like it could be something special. Also, something special is that speed from Saxon. He goes over 100 yards now. And if we score here, I may see you guys late into the fourth quarter, which we are. 
Dudley trots in virtually untouched. Kayvon Thibodeau gets injured, and we put up a 40 bomb on the Giants with still like a quarter and a half to go. I may have missed my – I better not be missing extra points in the playoffs. I can tell you that much. Uh, Joey Sly, who just got a contract extension, has missed two. I'm just talking during the extra points and not really – if it was really a game, I would be quiet. I would have the little Buddha effect up on here that you guys have probably seen with my uh, very unique editing style, I guess. But uh, we'll see what happens here. I don't know. You know, uh, maybe I'll just show some highlights for you. But uh, Jones and the Giants, they can't do nothing. Hi, it's me again. Two big runs by Saquon Barkley has his X Factor on. So, uh, you know, got to make sure. Oh, read option from Jones. What the heck is going on? Okay, so took them two and a half quarters to put together arguably their best drive. It was two big runs to the outside by Saquon Barkley, even though I did make our focus running uh, defending the outside run didn't seem to matter because Barkley did pick up two good ones. And this is definitely the Saquon Barkley drive. OK, all right. I like it. Giants don't think it's really going to matter too much at the end of the day. But I do like to see that you got some fight left in you and uh, you're trying to make the scoreboard at least a little bit more respectable. Got to respect Abel and the boys for that. We'll see if the Giants can finally punch it in here. They're on the nine-yard line, so one would think they could. Barkley making all kinds of cuts. He's got that first one free. X-Factor ability. And Giants got the ball down to the one. Sure, they're going to score here. Got to watch uh, Isaiah Hodgins over here. It's going to be a Barkley. No, it's not a Barkley run. It's a Ricky Bayless run. First time we saw him today. Wish it was Brian Robinson. Not sure what he's doing. He's just over there rotting away on the bench. I don't know why the Giants wanted him so much. They had tons of interest when I orchestrated that trade. But uh, let's see if we can stop Barkley. It's going to probably be Barkley, and we are going to stop him. There we go. It's Milo Eifler. And, I mean, you got to go for it, right? There's Yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's no reason to not try to go for this. A touchdown doesn't even really do you anything, but a field goal certainly doesn't. So we'll see if Jones can orchestrate some points here. We're going to have Chase Young kind of drop out in coverage, and he's not. Little Bunny uh, deflected into the pavement there. We do got to be a little careful, though, as we got the ball on the two-yard line. Maybe would love to see Dudley rip off a 98-yard gain. How cool would that be? That would be very cool indeed. And he is just going to barely give us a little bit more breathing room. This will be the last play here of the third. Dudley's trying to give us some daylight here, and he's going to give us daylight and more. Nearly gets the first down. But that will let this uh, clock tick down here to the end of the third. J.J. Ford is fired up. I'm fired up, and I hope you guys are fired up as well. Hopefully, we could just uh, run this clock out here, go ahead and take care of business, get ready to game plan for the playoffs. Okay, that's not good. Dudley just got injured. I was just kind of draining clock. Actually went for it on fourth and one because, I mean, whatever. Just trying to kill as much of the clock as possible. But Dudley actually got hurt. So hopefully that's not uh, anything too serious because definitely need the Saxonator for the playoffs. We'll see if Jones and the Giants can finally do something on offense here. I don't think they're gonna as Jones throws it away. Need to see an update on Dudley though. Please tell me he's okay. All right, he's good. And we are just gonna keep him out for the rest of this game. No need to get him further injured. Dwight Jackson can definitely take care of business and handle the load here, uh, yeah, no injuries, guys. We're we're pretty much healthy for the most part. We're missing a few guys. Daniel Jones just can't seem to get any sort of time in that pocket as he throws it away. Fourth and eight. If we stop this, I will. If we stop him on this play, I will see you guys at the end for a good old stats update. Ah, it's Taron Waller. All right. We'll take Jones to 81 yards, a whopping 81 yards in the game. Great job, Danny Dimes. Thank you. Ah, oh, Jonathan Allen gets hurt. So, uh, just try. Look, all I'm trying to do, man, is get out of this game. And uh, players are getting dropped. I suppose I should probably ought to sub, sub out all of our key players. Because we're getting some close calls here. And Jonathan Allen got to check on him at the end of the game. Uh, yeah, we need him just about as much as we need Dudley and others. He is such a key 
crucial guy for us and always in there, especially stopping the run. You know, it doesn't really have the uh, sack total necessarily that you would like him to have, but uh, always good there in run stoppage. Darren Waller going to score. Don't really care about that right now. I just care about the health and well-being of my brother, Jonathan Allen. And that will do it. Your score in St. Louis, 40 to 14. What a way to close out the regular season statement game for sure. And now we are going to be on to bigger and better things. I would say carrying a lot of momentum and a lot of good morale as a, a win like that is always sure to propel the boys. JJ Ford nearly perfect on his uh, debut return game. 16 for 20, 246 and four touchdowns. But look at that. It's like magic. It's like freaking magic. J.J. Ford comes back, zero interceptions. Sam Howell and Josh Dobbs, when they play, we get like four. Daniel Jones could never, ever, ever get it going. Dudley could, 23 carries for 130 yards and two touchdowns. Barkley did kind of pick it up there at the end. And how about McLaurin? Five receptions for 114 yards and three touchdowns. You love to see that from him. Uh, Sacks, Jonathan Allen got one, and he also got hurt. So got to check on him. At the end of this game, James Smith-Williams gets a big one and Chase Young as well. And of course, that pick from Justin Hayward. So we are going to be moving on to the playoffs and we did lock up the number one seed. What a season by the Sentinels. So many ups, very, very few downs. We had to overcome some adversity with our star MVP quarterback getting injured. And we did that and we get some big, big upgrades here for some of the guys McLaurin, he continues to be our best receiver. I mean, hands down. So he is definitely a deep threat. And we should maybe get that slot up to up a little bit. I think we could get some different abilities with him if we're able to do that. And slot always gets you good upgrades. Terry goes up to a uh, 96, playing up to a 99. Dudley Saxton, is there any question at all? I am going elusive back for sure. Once we get him up to 85, and if we could maybe get him to a superstar, which I think he should get at the end of this season, we'll have to see, you know, come Super Bowl time, if there's any uh, dev trade upgrades or changes. Jerry's pal, our rookie out of USC, going to continue to go uh, agile for him. And he is now playing up to an 80 as well. But we did not come away unscathed as Jonathan Allen will miss the entirety of the playoffs. That one stings. We're going to get Logan Thomas back soon. We, we got some uh, decently key injuries, I would say. And losing Jonathan Allen is the biggest one of the bunch. So going to need that defensive line to step up a little bit in his absence. But that's all right. We will get the first round by. So the next time I see you guys on this series, we will be in the divisional round of the playoffs. So. That is going to do it for me tonight, guys. But as always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one in the playoffs. Until then, peace.